Spirit. A very warm welcome to you all at home, wherever you may be, whether you're in the lounge room in Wagga, or other parts of Australia, or even other parts of the world. Welcome. This evening, this Thursday of the Lord's Supper, we commemorate uh, Jesus' beginning of his departure from this world, return to the Father, and before he goes, he gives us a memorial, the memorial sacrifice, the Mass, the Eucharist, the gift of the priesthood, the example of fraternal love, and we are called on this night to stay and watch with him, so that one day we may be found awake when the Master returns. Once again, welcome this evening, and on behalf of all the cathedral priests and the deacon as well, uh, we extend every blessing to you at home, and we unite now in spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so be prayed. In my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A long time ago, when I was at school, in primary school, in year four, we had a teacher, we will call her Mrs. Harris, and she was a wonderful teacher. I remember one day when a policeman was walking past the front of the school, she went out and ran and grabbed the policeman and convinced him to come into the classroom to meet us and to tell him about himself and what he does. Mrs. Harris was wonderful by, by everyone's account. We did know one thing, or we were told one thing about her, and that was that the last day of the year, the very last day of the year, that she would cry. Now the last day of the year came around about for us. The first half of the last day was quite normal. But by the afternoon, she gathered, gathered us all together and sat down, we all sat down in front of the classroom. Mrs. Harris put her stool in front of us all. She sat down in front of us and she cried and she cried and she cried. So great was her love for us that the time of departure tore her in two. Now it wasn't just our particular year group. We have good knowledge that every, every year group, every class she had, she loved so much that it brought her to tears when the time had come to depart. My friends, this Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, is the time when now Jesus departs this world to the Father. His hour has come. And now it's the hour, it's the just beginning before the festivities, before the festival of Passover. At the festival of Passover, all the Israelites, the children of God, the Jewish people, would bring lambs into Jerusalem. So the hundreds, thousands of all thousands of lambs coming in to Jerusalem, into the temple to be sacrificed for forgiveness of sin and as a memorial of the exodus from Egypt into the Promised Land. Now at Jesus' hour, he gathers his disciples together for one last encounter, one last intimate encounter with them. He gives them two gifts and gives them one example to follow. He gives them the gift of the priesthood, the gift of the Eucharist, and then he gives them the example of charity, of fraternal love for his disciples to follow. Now a gift is useless unless the recipient can use it. The recipient of the gift needs to know how to use it. And so if I was to give you a bottle of wine, dear adults, and you had no bottle opener, the gift would be useless regardless of the quality, the fine quality of the wine. Now Jesus gives us the gifts and the means to cooperate with them, to take them on board. He says, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. And so for us to truly encounter Christ, we too need to be like Peter, to be washed in baptism, and be washed in repentance, in reconciliation. We are called this evening to search our hearts and with grace to remove the obstacles that stand between us and Christ. Now, two disciples we hear about in tonight's Gospel, Peter and Jesus, Peter and Judas. My mistake, Peter and Judas both have obstacles to encounter in Jesus. Peter's obstacle is an intellectual one. He has great ideas about the Messiah. He has already told, he's already tried to dissuade Jesus from going the way of the cross. He, going the way of the cross, heaven forbid, Peter says. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. So Peter's obstacle, even on the night of the supper, still remains there. The intellectual failures, errors, intellectual errors remain there because Peter says, Lord, do not wash me. 
And Jesus has to correct those errors. If I do not wash you, you can have nothing to do with me. You have nothing in common. And Peter's errors vanquish because he comes on side. He says, then wash my heart, not only my feet, but my hands and my heart. The other errors we hear about Judas, not so much intellectual errors, but errors of the heart, bad values. We can say bad morals. And so it's fitting, it's always right that us Christians have what we call a hatred of sin out of love of God. We have a hatred of sin because it takes us away from God. It takes us away, away from happiness and it hurts us and hurts our neighbours. The last couple of weeks, people, a number of people have come up to me and said, Father, do you think this corona thing is a chastisement from God? Here is what I say in sound confidence. Firstly, only God knows that. I, I cannot stand in the place of God and make such presum presumptions. But we can say with confidence, though, that God is allowing this to take place. With full confidence, we know God is allowing this to happen. It's like God is pressing the pause button on our business on our jobs, on our sports and, and leisure, and just calling a bit of a time out. And calling us, my friends, with confidence, we can say that God is calling us to a deeper conversion. Those who are near and those who are far. Those in the pews and those who have been ordained to walk in the sanctuary of God. That is what God is calling us to do to have a deeper conversion. The Plenary Council, which has been underway, underway for quite a time, as you know, my friends, asked this very question, what do you think God is asking of us? Now, these submissions have been made public for those who chose to allow their, those submissions to be published. I was privileged to read them they are accessible on the internet. We can all read these submissions. And I read those from the Wagga Diocese. Many different stories of faith there. Encounters with Christ, hardships, journeys, conversions. It's very edifying to read and read, read them there. Many good stories of good people fighting the good fight and, and asking for support and the help of, of the whole church. Amongst all those submissions, there were some holding the errors of Peter, holding intellectual errors, if we can say that. And there were those holding the errors of Judas, some who had moral errors, moral issues, bad morals. Now, without placing judgment on the individuals, we can look at those intellectual errors and bad morals and say, well, they stand in between the individual and in between Christ. And so, for all of us to encounter Christ, to know him deeper, we must be purged of all the errors and sin, all the bad ideas and bad morals, and then to receive this baptism and do penance, to come closer. Error and sin are obstacles to Christ, and sin darkens the intellect. And error can it seems breed more error. In recent days in Australia, my friends, we've seen examples of people who do not care for truth, for people who do not care for justice, but continue with their minds darkened and with their errors to continue to hate despite truth, to hate despite the obvious charity which has come clear now. So my friends, we give thanks today, this very evening, that Christ instituted the priesthood for us to teach us, to lead us to the truth. Thank God for all the brave priests down through the ages who have been brave enough to teach the truth which enrich our lives. Thank God for the priesthood whereby we are we are, we are recipients of 
the sacraments of God's grace. Thank God for the sacraments, that the grace of the sacraments works even despite the worthiness or unworthiness of the minister. And thank God for those priests who have been great shepherds, who have been ministers of the Good Shepherd to us, and have continued to lead the flock of Christ to the Kingdom of God. We give thanks that Christ on this very evening instituted the Eucharist. He did this in order to perpetuate, to bring the, self, the, the sacrifice of the cross through the ages to this present age and until the end of time, until he comes again. He has entrusted this Eucharist to his beloved spouse, the Church, as a sacrament of love. A sign of unity and every time we encounter this our minds are filled with charity where sin darkens grace enlightens and so we are our hearts and our minds are filled with charity when we encounter Christ in the Eucharist and we are given a pledge of future glory This evening as well, Christ gives us the great example of fraternal love, of humility, of charity, to serve, to give a, a ministry of service, to give of ourselves, to enter into self-giving love, to sacrifice oneself. And so we are called to enter these mysteries and tonight to stay and to watch. And in a very special and real way from now until Holy Easter to keep this great vigil in our hearts and in our homes to pray, to account Christ in the scriptures, to stay and watch. This evening there's no washing of the feet, there's no procession as we usually have with the transfer of the Blessed Sacrament. But yet we keep this vigil as best we can, knowing that Christ has ordained this vigil and he has ordained this time for us to encounter him more deeply, to give thanks for everything he has done, to imitate him, and then God willing one day to be reunited here, to give thanks at the altar, and for us to be reunited when he comes again in glory. This night before his death, Jesus sat at table with his disciples, gathered to reenact that sacred supper. Let us join Christ and pray to the Father for all our needs. For the church on earth, that we may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those in positions of power and influence in the world, that they may understand something of the spirit of Christ's sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those confronted by temptation, that they may be strengthened by Christ's example of loyalty to his Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this community, that more and more we may reflect in our lives the Eucharistic love of Christ. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick all over the world, especially those in our community and those that we pray for, or those who have fallen victim to the coronavirus, that the good Lord may come to their aid and grant them healing of body, mind, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that the sacrifice of the Eucharist may bring them to eternal life, especially those we pray for and those written in our bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. Father, we come before you and present our needs to you. Humbled by the Eucharistic love and generosity of your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. forever. Blessed be God forever. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Give thanks. 
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal. Have 
chosen. Be pleased. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Christ our Lord, through 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, who sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
God, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my soul heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Once again, I'd like to extend a warm uh, greetings to all of you at home. Thank you for tuning in. We, we wish you every blessing this solemn triduum and uh, stay tuned because the Good Friday Passion Liturgy is at 3 p.m. and then we have on tomorrow and then Holy Saturday the vigil is at 7 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh